Welcome to Silver Bar Stacker, folks. I hope you're having a wonderful Thursday. Well, what do we got in front of us? We've got a nice wide selection of Johnson Matthew bars and rounds varying in very many sizes. <laughs> and also uh, a little bit of metal types, too. we got a little gold, little gold fractional over there. Now, why did I just break out a smorgasbord of JM products? Well, the video actually has nothing to do with Johnson Matthew, but I was just using Johnson Matthew as an example so we could kind of focus on the topic of today from sort of like a collector slash stacker standpoint. Uh, and, and the topic for today is uh, something that was kind of inspired by, couple, you know, very many videos by Silverstruck. But Silverstruck is always kind of uh, talking about uh, layers of value and the products that you're holding. And um, that kind of ties in nicely with the conversation I was having out, having with Savage Stacker yesterday, uh, where we were discussing, well, you know, the more layers of value that you add into a product that you're holding, uh, meaning the further away that you go from it being just a generic product, right, and then falling into a premium product here, well, yes, a, a larger premium will be carried with that, but by whom? Who who is going to provide you a better premium? A typical uh, bullion store, not not like us, right? A typical bullion store that's not specializing in collectibles or vintage, they treat all of the bullion the same, right? And so, at the end of the day, their business is heavily reliant on the spot price uh, because that's how they operate their business. Uh, which there's nothing wrong with that, right? If that's the way you operate your business, that's the way you operate your business. But because of that. When it comes down to the buy buyback part of their business, and they're buying back metals from you, aka you're selling metals to them, you're trying to unload something for just because you're trading or because you are on hard times and you, you're in a position where you kind of need to sell off a little bit of your metals because that's what they're for. Well, in that case, if you're planning, if your sell plan is to go to a traditional bullion store, they're only going to provide you close to melt, right? And so. Because of that, the premium that you pay for uh, collectible products that you're buying to make you happy, you know, you're not going to be able to obtain that if you're going to a traditional detail. If you if you if you are dealing with somebody um, who specializes in that, that might be a different story, right? They might be able to give you a better price because they have a market to sell that to, right? And so. You know, for just a, using Atmex as an example, right? I, I have no idea what their buyback rates are, but they 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 have certain products. Uh, they they probably have like a pricing sheet, right, for each of their products, and they have like specific products like Engelhard hundred ounce bars, Engelhard hundred bars, hundred ounce bars of this type, Engel, Engelhard hundred ounce bars of that type, and they might give you a different price for each of those different items. Whereas another uh, store like Money Metals, for example, Money Metals specializes not in, in vintage. In fact, they don't really do too much numismatic stuff. They might have some of their numismatic stuff here and there on special, right? And they're just trying to liquidate it at a pretty cheap price because they treat everything the same, right? To them, silver is silver, gold is gold. And so using them as an example, right? Here's a real life example, okay? Uh, my first time where I was selling my uh, metals, it was to money metals, right? And so great, great company. Um, I bought from them many times and I've sold to them one time as well. Uh, and it was a great experience. Uh, this was back when silver price was a little bit higher. Uh, I was selling off a of quite a big uh, um, chunk of bars and rounds, just generics, pure generics. We're talking like a monster box of buffaloes, silver buffaloes, and uh, dozens and dozens of generic kilo bars like Nadir kilo bars and uh, Wall Street Mint kilo bars and a bunch of generic 100 ounce bars. So this was all sold to them and they gave me a very good price at the time. It was like $2 for those bulk bars and like 250 
above spot for the uh, generic rounds, which I thought was great at the time. Based off of my needs, that, that worked out great. Uh, fast forward to just, you know, several weeks ago, I was trying to sell, you know, some 100 ounce bars and they were only giving me like 70 cents above spot. And this was not for generics, let me tell you. This was for 100 ounce single hard bars. I was saying like, I was just kind of getting a quote, like what would you be able to provide me with? And so they were telling me that 70 cents per spot was their current price, and that was for Engelhard premium bars. So that's a stark difference than before. So it really depends on the market and who you're selling to. So that's just something to be cognizant about, right? When you um, are dealing with the typical dealer, they're not going to really provide you with a significant premium for those added layers of value. But those added layers of value will provide you with security and assurance and maybe even some pleasure. And so you always, I think everybody at heart is kind of a stacker, but also kind of like a collector, right? They all have like pieces that they prefer more than others. And so even if you're just a, a stacker who's stacking pure generics, you have maybe a little bit of variation between the generics that you're stacking. And so you are in a sense a collector, right? Because you're kind of collecting uh, different types of variations of whatever it is that you're collecting. Right? Or maybe you are somebody who just stacks straight silver buffaloes and you stack nothing but that. Well, then you're a collector of silver buffaloes, right? So anyways, uh, we don't have any silver buffaloes here. I mean, you know, the closest thing we have to a silver buffalo would be these Johnson Matthew rounds here. And so uh, let's talk about, let's start with those. The added layer of value, right? That's kind of the topic. It took us a long time to get to the actual topic of today, but we're talking about added layers of value. And remember, as as, a, as me and Savage were speaking, the more layers of value you add, the less liquid it becomes on the sell end, um, and that it's harder to find a buyer. There's a smaller pool of buyers because it's now that added of layer of value usually adds an additional premium, and an additional premium, well then, a buyers will be shied away. And so the buyer pool is smaller, and so that makes it less liquid. There's also fewer of them out there if it is like a lower mintage or something like that. So mintages are another thing that we will focus on with respect to layers of value. But let's focus on this. For these rounds here, don't have any mintage info. So that's one layer of value that it doesn't have. I can't rely on, oh, I know the mintages of these. If I go pick up like an American Silver Eagle, I know what the mintage is on those. If I pick up a Prospector round, I know what the mintage is on those, 75,000 per year, right? Um, if it's American Silver Eagle, I think it's like five to six million some of the years. Uh, you know, I'm think, I think it's in the millions every year. So for the mintage, even the proofs are in the millions. So this right here is a nice sealed set. You've seen these on Silver Strikes channel. Nice sealed set of Johnson Matthew Bill of Rights rounds. Each round has a unique uh, design, which links to one of the Bill of Rights and showcases one of the Bill of Rights. Uh, this comes in the original factory seal these rounds are in excellent condition. So the fact that it's in the original factory seal, that's one additional layer of value that a typical round would not have. The fact that this is a vintage Johnson Matthew round and the fact that all this stuff is vintage Johnson Matthew, that's one additional added layer of value that adds a significant premium on its own, right? And so the fact that this is a full set, a complete set is another layer of value, right? You can go buy these rounds individually, uh, but the fact that this comes as a complete set and you don't have to go and spend the time trying to find, track down each one of these, that adds another layer of value. However, if we go to a traditional store like Money Metals or something, we say, hey, I've got this beautiful sheet of Bill of Rights rounds. They'll be like, oh, great, we'll give you, uh, what's the price of silver? Yeah, that plus 70 cents, and then, you know, that's what we'll give you. Also, if you had the rounds unsealed, we'll give you the same amount. Also, if you just have 10 of the same rounds, we'll give you the same amount. Also, if those are buffaloes, we give you the same amount. So that's, you know, that's how some, some stores operate. Those are the additional layers of value on something like this. Let's start over here. You know, we got all of our fractionals here. Uh, this you've seen on the channel before. It's a little one grammar. Um, so this one grammar right here is um, beautiful. It's a gorgeous item. The fact that it's a fractional is going to be an added layer of value because that makes it more liquid, right? The smaller it is, the easier it is to kind of divvy that up. Barter, the more accessible it is by people, right? So you'll usually pay a higher premium for fractional stuff. I mean, always you'll pay a premium for fractional stuff. 
Now, this is not just any fractional. This fractional is actually low mintage as well. It's only 10,000 minted. So this, is a, this comes at a hefty premium because you just don't really ever see these one grammars out there. It's serialized too. It has a serial number on there. So that's one additional added layer of value. Now this right here is a piece of gold. So the fact, this has all those same layers of value there, except I don't know the mintage on this, but um, this is gold though. So the fact that it's gold is another layer of added value. A lot of people seek out to stack gold knowing the gold rate, gold to silver ratio is what it is. They still stack gold uh, because it's easier, right? I can just hold this amount of gold. This is probably like 500 bucks worth of gold or something. Uh, whereas, you know, 500 bucks worth of silver might be like something like this, right? So that's a huge difference right there. <clears throat> so in addition to that, this is in the original factory seal. So that's another added layer of value there. This is a nice little Johnson Matthey TD Bank. You know how much I love TD Bank. It's a nice little TD Bank gold five grammar. This also this is a silver, but this also comes in the original seal. Now when, when now when you start being a collector, then you start like, oh, well, this has a cool blank back, but I want the one that has the hammer logo back too. So this is the this is where being a collector gets you into trouble. You you got to be careful. Scully always warned me, you know, collecting vintage, you can go down a deep rabbit hole. And he's absolutely right and I did that and so you know, <laughs> probably bought way more collectibles than I should have. I'm over leveraged in collectibles and I'm okay with that for the long term. But, uh, you know, you try to like sell some of this stuff off, right? Like those hundred ounce bars, they, Money, Money Metals is telling me for Inglehart bars, they're going to be 70 cents above spot. Uh, how about I just go give those to all my SPS family for like a little bit more than that? And so that's what I'm doing now is like, I'm not selling these, um, uh, for that low of a price, right? Knowing that I've already sold generic, like the gene the most generic of generic 100 ounce bars, I sold them and they gave me a significantly higher premium. Uh, so it just didn't make sense to me at the time and so I decided I'm not gonna do that. So that's just something to be mindful about. So now, now here, you know, these were five grammars. This is a half ounce blank back. This is pretty low mintage as well. So the fact that it's low mintage carries a premium. It's also an odd weight, like a half ounce is like an odd weight fractional. Yeah, you don't see a lot of half ounces out there. Now, these are just some normal kind of like one ounce bars. These are kind of like the kind of the generics of your Johnson Matthew, right? It's just a normal one ounce bar. This one's got a little bit of toning on it. Serial serial number. One of these is a blank back. One of these is a hammer logo back. But this is kind of like a normal Johnson Matthew bar, you know. Uh, now you start getting into kind of variations right now this this is johnson and matthew bars but it's kind of like a different variation here these are for suitors it's like a photography company from back in the day and you know johnson and matthew made bars for them now johnson and matthew skull stacks was telling me he's like you know because I, I started off getting really into Englehart stuff and uh he's like you know johnson and matthew you'll find even rarer more obscure much more low mintage stuff and so that can be an even deeper hole to go in, but I really wish I had took his advice to heart about vintage and collectibles, that it's a deep hole you can go into. It's very dangerous. And so you have to be very careful when you're collecting collectibles and you have to know what you're getting into. And I'm not saying that you have to be an expert on collectibles, but you have to do your due diligence and you have to be disciplined with it, right? Savage Stacker, you'll see him. He, he's a, he's a, he has a very good handle on his stacking strategy and he stacks very close to spot and he'll reward himself with a scooby snack every once in a while and i think that's a good strategy because this is not the type of stuff where unless you know for us we, we specialize in selling this stuff right i bought all this stuff with the intention of like okay i'm gonna buy a bunch of this stuff for the long term and then i'm gonna be able to share it with others right so that's like a, a little bit different like most people don't have the means to do that i have the means to do that and so i decided let me do that it's a good opportunity to do that let's do that Right, but a normal stacking strategy for most people is like, okay, you know, there's, and, and this is how I stack too. It's like, there's this much money coming in from your normal paycheck. Use the excess money after all your roof over your head is paid, after the food, food, you have food on the table and you have your bills paid. Once you have all that sorted, there's a little bit, hopefully a little bit of excess cash left over. And some of that could then be used towards your monthly, weekly, daily, uh, purchase of metals, right? And 
you know, everybody's strategy will be different. That's all I wanted to say. Um, here are some just normal 10 ounce Johnson Mathe bars. Blank back, regular. So as you can see, I'm a collector, right? So I want to make sure I have like a lot of types, right? So I have like one of each, you'll notice, right? But each of those variations adds sometimes a different type of premium. These, these are uh, really, really rare bars. This is like a 250 minted bar, super duper rare. Um, and so the fact that that is low mintage makes this extremely illiquid. You are going to have a hard time selling that bar um, for the price that you want to sell it for. Um, here, down here, you've got a nice selection of Escalante Mine Bars. These are some nice collectible Johnson Matthew Bars. I've got them in the 10 ounce variety, the 5 ounce variety, the 1 ounce variety. And these also have different variations, right? You've got one that has a 1982 date stamp there on the bottom. And then this one has got no date stamp. No date. One is in the original seal as well. The no date is in the original seal. Um, so now, now you, now you, okay. So another thing that uh, Skull Stacks have warned me about was, okay, I see you're into this pressed stuff, you know, and you can find some really rare stuff like these Johnson, Matthew, and Mallory pieces. This is like only a hundred minted. Um, so that stuff can get very, very pricey, very, very fast. But what then, what then, what then he was telling me was that like, well, you know, Port Silver is a whole different beast. Port Silver. Is completely different so these types of poured silver and, and once you start getting to the really really rare stuff I gotta give daddy silver bucks a, a shout out that dude collects some of the craziest obscure vintage and when we talk about illiquid well, let me tell you daddy silver bucks is the king of stacking illiquid uh, <laughs> vintage pieces right he, he these come from some very very small refiners nobody's re ever really heard of and uh, he finds finds some really really cool pieces, so I'd definitely check out Daddy Silverbucks. You know, a lot of these pieces, I I try not to go too illiquid because, uh, as much as I like them for my personal stacking, uh, when it comes to like if I'm running a store, right, I don't want to have so many products where it's like one of a kind because then somebody buys it and then it's difficult to replace it. So I like to get uh, items that have many many layers of value. Uh, additional layers of value but I also like to sometimes make sure that I can get duplicates of the items as well right and so like this you'll see right this is a nice really low mintage poor bars a 10 ounce a 3 ounce but then I've got the same same ones here these these are like toners so I've got the same ones here as well so that's kind of what it comes down to um, gosh this is such a big stack of items I think you kind of get the point now right layers of value original seal serial numbers poured versus not poured how big the denomination is um, there's just limitless additional layers of value that you can assess on your items and so I guess the important takeaway here is that be mindful of that be informed do your research about the items that you're holding so that you know what their true value is on on the markets that you're trying to sell sometimes the easiest way to sell is to just go to a traditional store and boom liquidate your stuff and when you want to do that generics are the way to go because you buy that stuff cheap you sell it cheap and so that's why it's important to have a nice base stack of generics that's all i gotta say have a good one Ow, 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 ow,